Imagine this for a second. You take a wrong turn on what looks like a normal road, the kind that starts paved, then turns into gravel, then becomes nothing but dust. You keep going because the car feels fine, the sky is clear, and you tell yourself you'll find a signal again in a few minutes. Then you stop, step out, and realize the horizon looks identical in every direction. Your car is still intact. The battery still has plenty of charge. The cabin is cool. The screen is bright. Everything looks modern and capable. But your phone has no service. Not weak service, no service. No bars, no emergency call, no map refresh, no message, no share my location, nothing. It sounds like a movie scenario, but it has happened in real life more times than most people want to admit, and not only in deserts. It happens in mountains, rural highways, storm zones, and wide empty stretches where you can drive for hours without seeing another vehicle. In those moments, the difference between comfort and danger is not the battery, not the tires, not even the weather. It's connectivity. And that's why what Tesla is quietly moving toward could be one of the biggest shifts in automotive history since airbags became standard. Not because it's flashy, and not because it makes your car feel like a spaceship, but because it changes the survival math of being alone in the wrong place at the wrong time. Tesla integrating Starlink into its vehicles is no longer just a fun idea people throw around online. The concept has been circling for years, and Elon Musk has teased the synergy more than once, but now the clues feel less like speculation and more like preparation. If Tesla really does move toward built-in satellite connectivity, this is not simply a faster internet upgrade. It's a new baseline for what a connected vehicle can be, and it could open an entirely new game that other automakers are not ready to play. Welcome to Torque Element, where we focus on what the technology actually changes in real life. If you want Tesla an EV analysis that's calm, grounded, and built around reality instead of hype, Support Torque Element by subscribing and turning on notifications. Our goal is to build a serious community of viewers who care about what's coming next and what it means day to day, not just what sounds exciting on paper. Now let's walk through why satellite internet inside a Tesla could be one of the most important upgrades the company has ever attempted, why it's harder than it sounds and why it connects directly to Tesla's larger strategy around autonomy, robotaxis, and even Optimus. For years, in-car internet was treated like a convenience. You used it for navigation, music, maybe a podcast. If it dropped for a few minutes, it was annoying, but it wasn't a crisis. That era is ending, and Tesla is one of the biggest reasons why. Tesla is not just a car with internet. Tesla is an ecosystem that depends on connectivity in ways most vehicles never have. Software updates are central to the ownership experience. Remote commands matter. Cloud-based features matter. Driver assistance systems learn from fleets. Even basic ownership habits, like using your phone as a key, assume a certain level of digital reliability. And Tesla owners have already felt the friction when that reliability disappears. People have experienced moments where the phone key misbehaves, syncing fails, features lag, a trip becomes harder than it should be because the car is smarter than the network supporting it. The smarter the vehicle, the more it depends on connectivity. That is not an opinion. It is a design reality. The problem is that traditional cellular networks were never designed to cover the entire planet. There are still huge regions, even in wealthy countries, where service simply drops. People in the United States know this if they've driven through wide rural areas. People in Europe know it in certain mountain regions. And if you look at massive landscapes like Australia, the gaps become almost shocking. You can have the most advanced phone on earth and it becomes a glass brick the moment you drive into the wrong zone. That is the fatal weakness of the current model. It assumes the ground network will always be there. Starlink does not. Starlink is a low Earth orbit satellite network designed to blanket the globe with coverage wherever you can see sky. That is the basic promise, not perfection, not infinite speed everywhere, but availability, 
a path to connection where the ground cannot provide it. Now here's the part most people miss. Putting Starlink in a vehicle is not as simple as sticking an antenna somewhere and calling it a day. Vehicles are metal shells. They are glass. They are structural layers. They are designed to protect you, and those very protections can block signals. Satellite signals do not behave like cellular signals. They need a different relationship to the sky. This is why the idea of Tesla redesigning roof materials to be radio frequency transparent is so important. If Tesla is thinking in those terms, it suggests they are not treating satellite connectivity like a novelty accessory. They are treating it like an integrated system. A roof component designed to allow satellite signals to pass through is an engineering move, not a marketing move. It implies Tesla wants the antenna to live inside the structure, protected, clean, and permanent, rather than bolted on like an awkward afterthought. And if Tesla pulls that off, the advantage is not just internet speed, it's continuity. Near continuous connectivity changes everything Tesla does. It changes how the vehicle uploads and receives data. It changes how updates can be deployed without depending on patchy coverage. It changes how navigation behaves in remote areas. It changes whether the cabin can remain fully functional as a digital space, even when the human driver is far away from civilization. But the biggest shift may be safety. If a vehicle has satellite connectivity, you can transmit location even when the ground network is dead. In a true emergency, that changes response time. It changes whether people can find you. It changes whether a stranded driver becomes a missing person story or a rescue story. For older viewers especially, this hits differently. It's not about flexing technology. It's about peace of mind. It's about knowing that a road trip does not become a risk just because the map stops updating. Now add another layer. Tesla could, in theory, turn that satellite connection into a hotspot. That's not a promise. It's a possibility. And it would be a major shift because Tesla has historically been conservative about letting the vehicle become a general-purpose Internet source for other devices. But imagine what this could do in combination with Tesla's existing features like camp mode. Tesla already allows you to run climate control, power devices, and turn the car into a comfortable shelter. Add reliable internet and suddenly you're not just camping, you're operating. You're working. You're communicating. You're navigating. You're safe in a way that changes the meaning of remote travel. This is where the Cybertruck conversation becomes relevant, because a vehicle designed for off-road capability paired with satellite connectivity creates a new kind of product category. Not just an electric truck, but a mobile base, a remote office, a powered shelter that can remain connected nearly anywhere. And yes, there is a downside. Being reachable anywhere means you can be interrupted anywhere. For some people, the point of being remote is to disappear for a while, to stop being available. Satellite connectivity makes it harder to hide. But the world is moving in a direction where connectivity becomes a default expectation. The same way people once asked if a car had airbags or anti-lock brakes, people may eventually ask whether a car can stay connected beyond cellular coverage. Not as a luxury, but as a safety layer. That is the human impact piece, and it matters more than any spec sheet. Now, if Tesla integrates Starlink directly, it also shifts the competitive landscape. Other automakers can offer good infotainment. They can offer connected services. But offering global satellite connectivity at scale inside consumer vehicles is a different level of ambition. It creates a moat because it blends car hardware, space infrastructure, and software control into one ecosystem. This is why Tesla's biggest advantage has never been a single feature. It's that Tesla tends to build systems. The vehicle, the network, the charging, the software, the data. And that brings us to the next part of your script. Because Tesla's connectivity story ties directly into autonomy. 
and autonomy ties into the race Tesla is running right now with Robotaxis, and the vehicle Tesla keeps signaling as the end game for that vision. The Cybercab You may have noticed a pattern over the last few months. The internet fills with images, short clips, sightings, and speculation whenever Tesla tests something new on public roads. But what matters is not the excitement. It's what the testing reveals about where Tesla really is in the process. Cybercab sightings, especially in a real urban environment like downtown Austin, matter because they suggest Tesla has moved beyond controlled environments and into the messy reality of city streets. That is where systems get stressed. That is where edge cases live. That is where the public begins to see whether the product is real. Now, some viewers get confused when they see a cybercab prototype with side mirrors or with what appears to be temporary manual controls. They say, wait, wasn't this vehicle supposed to have no steering wheel, no pedals, no human driver? Yes, that is the concept Tesla has described, but prototypes are not final products, and regulatory reality is not a suggestion, it's a constraint. So here's the real question to end on, and I want you to answer it honestly in the comments, because it tells Torque Element what to model next. If Tesla offered built-in satellite connectivity, would you pay for it as a monthly service, or would you only want it if it came bundled for safety without extra cost? And if you knew your vehicle could stay connected almost anywhere, would you actually use it for remote travel? Or would you prefer the idea of safety without changing your habits? And on the autonomy side, are you more excited by Robotaxis becoming normal in cities? Or does that still feel like a step too far until regulations catch up and the public sees years of safe operation? Finally, on Optimus, do you think people are judging too harshly because they expect science fiction? Or do you believe Tesla needs to be more transparent about what is autonomous today and what is still assisted? Drop your thoughts below. I read the comments and your answers shape what we cover next. If you found this breakdown useful, support Torque Element by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with someone who still thinks car connectivity is only about streaming music. Because the truth is deeper now. In the next era of vehicles, Connectivity becomes safety, safety becomes trust, and trust becomes the deciding factor for who wins the future.